Leg swelling is fluid accumulation in the leg. Swollen feet are very common, especially as people age. It affects around 20% of the population after 50. Swollen feet and ankles can be a sign of serious health problems such as kidney problems, heart failure or liver disease. But fortunately, 80% of cases are more benign. We will discuss the top 7 causes of swollen feet and ankles and how to recognize and manage them. The most common cause of leg swelling is prolonged sitting or standing codependent edema. It is extremely common with around 40% of swollen ankle cases due to it. When we sit or stand, fluid moves down towards our feet due to gravity. Some fluid leaks into the tissues and in this case veins should pump the fluid towards the heart but they fail if a person has an ineffective venous system due to aging for example. Also when we sit or stand for prolonged periods calf muscles do not contract rhythmically and the contraction is needed to effectively pump blood from the feet towards the heart. So a combination of these factors causes fluid accumulation in the feet. It usually worsens during the day and in the evening. A person notices the swelling. Usually it is not painful and is bilateral, meaning both feet are affected equally. Pissing on the swollen area leaves a temporary indentation called a pit and such edemas are known as pitting edema. Such dependent edema is common in older people, overweight individuals and those who are sedentary and also in pregnant women due to increased venous pressure. The treatment of the condition is leg elevation above the level of the heart whenever possible. Several 30 minute sessions throughout the day are enough and sleep with your legs slightly elevated using pillows. Regular movement is also crucial to get up and walk approximately every 45 minutes. Regular exercise, weight loss and reducing salt intake also help because salt causes fluid retention in the tissues. Generally, dependent edema is benign in nature, but people who are prone to venous insufficiency also have an elevated risk of deep vein thrombosis, especially if other risk factors are present. Second most common cause of swollen feet is chronic venous insufficiency. It happens because the one-way valves in the leg veins become incompetent, weak or damaged and do not close properly, allowing blood to flow backward, known as reflux, and pool in the lower legs. This causes fluid accumulation in the feet, which worsens over time. It starts gradually and slowly progresses over years. Also, it usually affects both legs and worsens. So, and standing or sitting for prolonged periods and is partially relieved by leg elevation. So, it resembles dependent edema. But the key difference is skin changes on the ankles and feet. In the case of dependent edema, there are no skin changes. While in the case of venous insufficiency, the skin becomes brownish, especially around the ankles. The skin and underlying subcutaneous tissue become thickened, hardened and fibrotic. Visible, bulging, twisted veins are a common sign of chronic venous insufficiency known as varicose veins. Although not all patients with venous insufficiency have obvious varicose veins, patients often describe a feeling of heaviness, aching or fatigue in the legs, especially after prolonged standing. Leg itching and cramping are also common complaints. The skin and underlying subcutaneous tissue become thickened, hardened and fibrotic. The leg may develop an inverted champagne bottle appearance with a narrowed ankle and a wider calf. At first, chronic venous insufficiency causes pain edema, but over time, when the skin thickens and hardens, pressing it does not leave a prominent indentation. Women have a higher risk of venous insufficiency due to vein structure and hormonal changes related to pregnancy and also obesity, deep vein thrombosis, aging, smoking and genetics play an important role. Chronic venous insufficiency increases the risk of several complications. For example, venous ulcers which are difficult to heal and can become infected, leading to serious complications. Bleeding is also possible as varicose veins can bleed sometimes profusely if injured. And deep vein thrombosis can be a life-threatening condition. Generally, venous insufficiency is the consequence of deep vein thrombosis, but the opposite can also happen as venous stasis can increase the risk of thrombus formation in deep veins. 
The main treatment in this case is compression stockings, which apply external pressure to the legs, helping to reduce venous pressure. Exercise, weight loss, leg elevation, and stopping smoking are also important. Sometimes diuretics can be used for the short term, but they do not address the underlying cause. The third most common cause of leg swelling is medications. Many common medications cause leg swelling. The most important hallmark is that leg swelling is strongly correlated with starting a new medication or increasing the dosage of an existing one. Usually it develops within days to weeks. Common medications which cause leg swelling include amlodipine, which is a hypertension medication that causes blood vessel dilation and fluid leakage into tissues, resulting in edema, as well as nifedipine and diltiazem. Even common medications such as ibuprofen and naproxen can also cause leg swelling. Estrogens, progesterones, prednisolone and diabetes medications can also cause swollen feet. This leg swelling is usually bilateral and pitting, meaning that when pressed, an indentation is left. The severity of this swelling may be related to the dose of the medication. As higher doses are more likely to cause edema, the most effective treatment is to stop the medication causing the edema or switch to a safer medication. The fourth important cause is heart failure. In the case of heart failure, swelling is also present in both legs and starts in the feet and ankles progressing upwards. Patients also experience shortness of breath known as dyspnea, especially during exertion or when lying flat called orthopnea. Patients may need several pillows to sleep propped up because of difficulty breathing. The person is usually weak and fatigue is common. Uh, neck veins are visible and bulging. A persistent cough is also noted, sometimes producing frothy or pink tinged sputum. The combination of bilateral edema, shortness of breath, especially with exertion or when lying flat, and fatigue strongly suggests heart failure. This condition is more common in people with existing heart diseases and diabetes. The fifth important cause is kidney problems. If leg swelling is due to kidney disease, swelling usually starts around the eyes, especially in the morning. This helps differentiate it from heart failure, where ankle swelling is usually more prominent initially. Also, when we have kidney disease, other common signs are increased urine output, especially at night. Foamy urine due to proteins in the urine or blood in the urine called hematuria. People with diabetes and high blood pressure have an increased risk of kidney disease causing leg edema. The sixth most important cause is lymphedema. It is usually swelling in one leg, although it is possible in both legs in red cases. The edema is non-pitting, meaning that when you press it, it does not cause an indentation due to the accumulation of protein-rich fluid and fibrosis in the tissues. The skin can become thick and hardened and have a pale orange or orange peel appearance. Lymphedema is typically not painful, although there may be a feeling of heaviness or tightness. A history of cancer treatment is the most important risk factor as lymphedema often develops after surgery involving lymph node removal, for example, for breast cancer, melanoma or pelvic cancers. Lymphedema is also possible in the arms due to breast cancer treatment, also radiation therapy to areas containing lymph nodes. And the seventh cause is liver disease. When the liver causes edema, it affects both legs and ankles. The accumulation of fluid in the abdomen is a key feature of advanced liver disease, which is a major differentiating factor. Jaundice, I mean the uh, yellowing of the skin and whites of the eyes due to build up and build up may be present. Fatigue and weakness are common and easy bruising and bleeding occur due to impaired production of clotting factor. Spider angiomas, which are small spider-like blood vessels on the skin may also be observed. The combination of legibema, ascites, yondis and other signs of liver dysfunction strongly suggest liver disease. It is more common in people with a history of alcoholism, chronic viral hepatitis and non-alcoholic liver disease such as fatty liver. Other liver diseases can also increase the risk of ascites and leg swelling. Also in OBC individuals, leg swelling is common and during pregnancy it is very common, especially in the third trimester. 
why you should have benign it is crucial to rule out preeclampsia which would have additional symptoms such as high blood pressure protein in the urine headache and vision changes